Hello, my name is Tamara Kelly. I'm a registered nurse and transplant coordinator with the New Jersey Sharing Network, here to talk to you about the role of respiratory therapy in the donation process. First, a little data about lungs. Um, the national lung waiting list currently is 1,620 patients. Just in our region, which includes New Jersey, Delaware, Pennsylvania, Maryland, and West Virginia, um, 228 patients are listed. A little bit about what we've done over the last year. Um, year to date, July 23rd, 2013, we had 18 lungs transplanted. And so far this year, we've had 29 lungs transplanted, which is a 24% increase in utilization just within our OPO and currently is 19% higher than the national average. The objectives for today are going to be to define and understand the important role that respiratory therapy plays in the donation process, both before brain death, uh, during brain death assessment, um, during donor management, and in another process that we call um, donation after cardiac death, or DCD. Um, the role in management prior to brain death is one of the most important. Um, the key objectives is to maintain a normal pH of 7.3 to 7.45, uh, maintaining a normal CO2, uh, 35 to 45, and maintaining a PO2 on um, arterial blood gas of about 100 on the lowest possible FiO2. Um, prevention of atelectasis and pneumonia are two key components that help lungs be transplanted in our po patient population. The most important interventions for the respiratory therapist are um, using tidal volumes of 6 to 8 mils per kilo of ideal body weight. We all know that even if you're large, your lungs are the same size based on your height. Um, this reduces barotrauma and lung injury. Um, the lowest possible PEEP settings, our goal is always to get down to five. Um, frequent suctioning to prevent atelectasis, aspiration, and lack of swallow reflux. Um, despite having an ET tube, many oral secretions um, do follow that path and go down into the lungs, and our patients need more suctioning than anyone else. Um, and maintaining peak inspiratory pressures less than 20 with the use of appropriate modes of ventilation and the other interventions we talked about before. As we all know in the ICU, respiratory nursing is a collaborative process all the time and some of the key interventions that help lungs be transplanted are combined efforts of respiratory and nursing. Um, turning at least Q2, head of bed over 30 degrees, um, oral care Q4, um, suctioning and chest PT. Um, Cheap PT helps move secretions and keeps our lungs recruited. Um, another key role is the respiratory therapist during brain death testing, and that mostly includes the apnea exam. Um, first, a baseline arterial blood gas needs to meet hospital policy, which is a PCO2 of greater than or equal to 40. Uh, Pre-oxygenation with 100% FiO2 for at least 10 minutes, preferably 30 before disconnecting the ventilator. Um, saturating all the red blood cells with oxygen lead to less tissue ischemia during the apnea exam. Um, the next step is, as you know, disconnecting the ET tube from the mechanical ventilator and putting either a T-piece for a blow-by oxygen source or a nasal cannula um, cut and put down the ET tube at no more than six liters per minute. And we know the apnea tests, the goal is to go for the full 10 minutes to see a rise in CO2 of more than 20. The next key role that respiratory plays is during donor management in collaboration with the transplant coordinator. So once a patient is declared and consented, um, the transplant coordinator needs the respiratory therapist as a resource to choose the appropriate ventilator settings for organ function and allocation. While we prefer PRVC, um, other modes patient dependent are acceptable. Um, our goals are always a PEEP of 5, FiO2 of 40% or less and peak inspiratory pressures, again, less than 20. Um, we draw ABGs at least Q6 hours and PRN vent changes um, or changes in clinical status. Our patients tend to um, become acidotic very quickly, either due to high blood sugars or some other metabolic process. Um, the other thing that's required for organ allocation of lungs is challenge gases every four to six hours as well, which is where the FiO2 is turned up to 100% for 30 minutes and another gas is drawn before returning the FiO2 back to 40%. Um, this shows us how well the alveoli are functioning and we want to see how, how far we can push those lungs um, PO2s. Um, goal PO2 for a lung donor is at least over 400. And continued collaboration with the transplant coordinator. Because our patients are brain dead, they have zero reflexes that you and I have to maintain their airway and protect 
the normal function of the lungs. Um, so recruitment is a big issue for us and a big thing that we have to do constantly. Um, ways we can do this are bag suctioning with a PEEP valve, um, inspiratory holds, again turning in head of bed, um, as well as closed PEEP maneuvers on the ventilator. We will turn up the PEEP um, as high as the patient will tolerate it, up to a maximum PIP of 40, and watch their arterial blood pressure just to make sure they tolerate it. And at a point when the blood pressure starts to come down, we back off. Um, and then again, manual CPT. Um, quick story is I had a patient who had PO2s over 400, and suddenly about an hour before the OR, we had a gas in the 200s, and everyone thought you know doing CPT for a little bit wasn't going to work. Well, 30 minutes of some inspiratory holds, some manual CPT, our challenge gases were back in the 450s, and the lungs were transplanted at the Cleveland Clinic. Um, the other process you may be involved with as a respiratory therapist is donation after cardiac death. Um, these are patients with, again, with reversible brain injuries that have not deteriorated to brain death. Um, and next of kin have decided to withdraw life-sustaining measures. Um, the evaluation done by the transplant coordinator includes neurologic, respiratory, and overall clinical status and past medical history. And the biggest thing we're assessing for is the likelihood that a patient is going to ex um, reach cardiac death within 90 minutes. And one of the most important parts of this assessment is the respiratory assessment. Um, what we're looking for is a CPAP trial of 5 over 5, um, preferably 10 to 15 minutes as long as the patient tolerates it. What we're looking for is work of breathing, a tidal volume, and respiratory rate. Um, and this kind of guides us in the direction of whether we think this would be a good um, DCD to pursue. And you, respiratory is the um, key component of that. Um, the other things we're looking for is a NIF and as well as a cuff leak. Once a patient is consented for DCD and a time is set, a care is continued by the hospital. This is a living patient. We will request ABGs similar to that of the brain dead donor. And there is um, some talk of maybe doing more DCD lungs. Um, the comfort care is in, in a controlled environment, carried out the same way that the hospital does it, with their order set and the nurse administering medications as um, indicated for the patient's comfort. Um, but it's in a more controlled environment. We'd like to do it in the PACU or holding room outside of the OR suite. Um, typically, respiratory extubates according to hospital policy um, without any use of supplemental oxygen after extubation. Um, the organ recovery takes place after the attending physician has acknowledged that the patient has, is asystolic. Um, and during this time, transport to the OR suite occurs um, during what's called the five-minute observation period for any auto-resuscitation. Um, once the five-minute observation period is up and the attending physician says, um, says so, organ recovery takes place. So in conclusion, uh, respiratory therapy plays a key role in maintaining uh, lung suitability for transplant. As lungs are the most sensitive to the physiologic changes after brain death, only about 21% of organ donors are actually lung donors. Good management before, during, and after brain death is key to making lungs available for transplant, and respiratory therapy plays a key role in this process. I hope this gives you a better understanding of how important the role of respiratory therapy is in the organ donation process. And I'd like to thank you for taking the time to listen um, to my presentation today and hope to be working with you all in the future. If you can imagine pinching your nose and breathing through like a coffee stir or a small straw, that's what breathing felt like for me on a daily basis. I remember we got the lungs and we got the right lungs, the viable lungs, and I was gonna get my transplants. You go from dying, being someone that's about to die, in nine hours, a completely healthy individual. How surreal. That's, in, it's amazing. I still can't believe it, that they can do things like that. My doctors didn't just save me, they saved everybody that I know from a serious heartache, from watching me be so ill. I was a young girl that almost wasn't here anymore. It's an, an absolutely amazing transformation 
that I've been through. 